what is eating my strawberries? It can be so discouraging when you're going out to your garden to pick fresh strawberries and you see this. So in today's video, we're talking about the three most common things that are probably eating your strawberries. It goes without saying, but be sure that when you come out to pick your strawberries, if you don't see a lot of them and it seems like they're being picked, maybe rule out children or even potentially your pets. I know that my dogs absolutely love strawberries and if there's any that are hanging over the side of my bed here, they will eat them. One of the most common things that is eating your strawberries is birds. Most of us really love birds and we love attracting them to our garden. And in general, they're actually a great thing to have in your garden because they control a lot of other pests in your garden. The goal should not be completely keeping birds away from your garden, but rather keeping them away from your strawberries. In the past, I have used netting to cover my strawberries and it was quite effective except that now and then probably about two or three times a year I had to release a bird that accidentally got caught under the net and I don't really love that option I don't love the potential that I could really hurt a bird I have seen people that have huge bird issues take their raised strawberry bed and add a a permanent lid onto their bed that has netting on top. It has latches and hinges and they can lift it and they can harvest their strawberries and then close it back up. And that's a really great option if you are handy and you have the time and budget to do that because it's pretty much set that nothing's getting in there, at least anything large. Not all of us has that skill set. So uh, here are some other great options for you. This is the first year that I am trying these painted rocks. They're super easy to make. Um, I just get a small kind of somewhat flat shaped rocks and then just paint a strawberry color on this. Now I've heard people who do this but they don't do add all these special details. They literally just paint them red. The birds will see that red color intermixed among your actual strawberries and it takes a couple pecks to quickly realize that they don't want to hang out here and they will fly away. I'm not sure how effective this is going to be. I feel if you have a really high bird population that tends to really get uh, feasting on your strawberries, this is probably not going to keep them away, or at least this alone is not going to keep them away. But it might be a great option to do in conjunction with some other things. Also, you have to consider your space. A lot of these things that I'm telling you here really only apply to a home gardener who has a somewhat small to medium strawberry patch. This does not apply to commercial strawberry growers. Another option for birds is using scare tactics. Now, a lot of people think of your traditional scarecrow that you see standing out in the field. Those aren't very effective. And the reason is because you need something that changes and moves. You know those owls that you'll see on buildings that are supposed to keep birds away and they don't work very well. If you can get one of those that has the moving head that kind of bobbles around and then you move it around every time you come out to your patch, you move it around your strawberry patch, there's a good chance that will be enough to keep the birds away because it's not stable and staying in the same spot. You know those pinwheels that spin in the wind? Those are fantastic, but get one of those that has the very metallic looking sides to it so that as it spins, it's flashing the sunlight and it'll be hopefully enough to deter them away if you put those, place those throughout your garden. Birds are definitely tricky ones to handle, but if you use multiple of these, you probably will have some success. Let's talk about slugs. Slugs are the bane of my existence as a gardener. I live in the Pacific Northwest and slugs are a huge problem here. If you have a huge slug problem, I do have an entire video talking about my slug solutions that I've come up with. For today's video, talking only about strawberries, here are the things that I've tried that some have worked and some have not, and maybe it will work for you. It is common knowledge that slugs do not like copper. In fact, their slime has a reaction to copper that basically shocks them. So they will not cross copper at all. If you have a raised bed, using copper strips like this on the sides of your bed will keep them from going over the side of your bed. If you don't have raised bed, you can find these uh, large mesh copper things, but it seems like a lot of work for such a small area. I have found the solution did not work very well, partly because uh, my son likes to peel this off, but also um, it does tend to come off with rain. As soon as my bed gets wet, it wants to peel off. And of course, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so we get a lot of rain. I found this copper tape on Amazon. I'll link it in the comments below. So if you can make this copper tape work, it's a wonderful solution to keep slugs out. I've also used slug traps in my garden. And although it did work and it did trap and kill the slugs, um, I have heard, and I probably would say this is true, that slugs are, they can smell that beer or yeast mixture from a long ways away. So it can actually almost attract more, attract more slugs to your garden. And even though it does kill them, as it's attracting them to the garden, they could end up feasting on your 
plants nearby. But that is always a solution you can certainly try within your strawberry patch. I have found when it comes to slugs though that the best way for me is to go out at night and hand pick the slugs off. And I know a lot of people don't love that idea and I do wear gloves because it is a bit disgusting. It is a surefire way to get all the slugs. Because slugs are so slow moving, once you've taken them out of your strawberry patch, it takes them a while to come and reinfest it. So personally, this has been my approach this season is I, uh, especially in the spring when it was cool and wet, I was outside almost every evening, hand picking slugs off of my entire garden and especially my strawberry patch. And now that it's warmed up, the slug damage is definitely subsiding. Liam's currently playing with a huge broccoli leaf that I gave him and playing in the water. It's a garden kit for you. Now the last pest that could be eating your strawberries is actually two, pill bugs and earwigs. The reason I combine these together is the first thing is the solution is the same for both of them. And the second thing is that they're actually not typically a big garden pest. Uh, earwigs and pill bugs tend to be opportunistic pests in that they really will only become a pest if there's not maybe a lot of other food for them to eat or if anything that's feeding on them is low. Pill bugs and earwigs are actually really important in your ecosystem of your garden. They are the decomposers of your garden. They will eat a lot of that debris. They're great in your compost pile. They will break down a lot of rotting things. In fact, if you lift up a rotting log, you will almost always find pill bugs. The goal with pill bugs and earwigs is not to completely get rid of them, but to just minimize them and move them to a different part of your garden. One way to do that is by trapping them and not in a bad way, but in a good way. I took a half a watermelon. You can see that I scooped out the inside here. I do have enough flesh here that is going to attract those bugs that we want to catch. And I'm just going to place this in my garden and I'm going to prop up one side of it so that those bugs can get underneath. This, this can also work with half of an orange, same sort of thing. I've even seen people use potatoes or melons, same sort of thing, anything that the bugs are gonna wanna eat. You're gonna place these in your strawberry patch, preferably at night and check it in the morning because that is oftentimes when those bugs will become active. They will crawl inside and start eating that wonderful fleshy stuff that you left them. And in the morning, there's still gonna be some in there and you can take them and go toss them into your compost pile where they can do a lot of great work for you, but you're moving them from your strawberry patch. This is also a wonderful trap for slugs. When it comes to pests in your garden, the goal is never full eradication, but rather managing those pests as much as possible so that you can minimize the damage. Believe me, it can get really devastating when you have pests that are taking over your garden. If you desire to have a garden that is naturally pest resistant, one where the solutions you use for pest management are both natural, effective, and sustainable, then check the description below for my workshop on natural pest management. In that workshop, I'm giving you so many tips on how to set your garden up for success to be naturally pest resistant and finding solutions to pests that work with nature and not against. It. I hope that you found some helpful tips in this video to figure out what exactly is eating your strawberries and how to manage them. Until next time, go out and grow something. God bless. Oh, what a pretty flower. Thank you. Showing them that. It's rocks in it.